The learning objectives for this chapter are Familiarization with the duties of the officer of the watch, OOW. Understanding the responsibility of being in charge of a navigation watch. The officer of the watch is the master's representative and is in charge of the bridge during his watch and until properly relieved. The primary duties can be divided into three groups. Watch keeping, including collision avoidance. Navigation. Communications. He is at all times responsible for safe navigation and for complying with all statutory requirements, including the coal regs. The watch-keeping duties of the officer of the watch include maintaining a lookout and general surveillance of the ship, collision avoidance in compliance with coal regs, recording bridge activities and making regular checks on the vessel's position and efficiency of the navigational equipment in use. Procedures for handing over the watch and calling for support on the bridge should be in place and fully understood and accepted by the officer of the watch. The navigational duties of the officer of the watch are based upon the need to execute the passage plan safely and monitor the progress of the ship against that plan and the master's standing orders. It is the navigator's duty to cross-reference all navigation information whenever possible in order to detect instrument errors and inaccuracies and minimize the effect of mistakes. With the introduction of the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, GMDSS, radio communications have become an important element in the functions of the bridge officer of the watch, who will be responsible for maintaining a continuous radio watch at sea. During distress incidents, one of the personnel qualified in radio communications should be assigned primary responsibility for radio communications. The officer of the watch will normally be responsible for a number of duties, in addition to the primary duties of watchkeeping, navigation and communication. Examples of such duties are cargo monitoring, general communications, engine monitoring, supervision of ship safety systems, etc. Care should be exercised to prioritise responsibilities and any additional duties should under no circumstances interfere with the exercise of primary duties. In compliance with the coal regs, a proper lookout should be kept at all times in order to maintain a continuous vigilance by sight and hearing as well as by all other available means. According to STCW, the officer of the watch may be the sole lookout during daylight hours if weather, visibility, traffic density, workload and other relevant safety parameters allow it. The officer of the watch must maintain a high level of general awareness about the ship and its day-to-day -day operations. Strict compliance with the coal regs should always be executed and the correct lights, shapes and other signals displayed at all times. The officer of the watch should not expect all other ships to show correct signals or even comply with the rules at all times and therefore great care should be taken when passing another ship at close range. Periodic checks of navigational equipment according to a proven and established operating and maintenance system, followed by good operating procedures and checking against alternative methods. Checking electronic equipment and computer-based systems at regular intervals are not only recommended, but vital to operate a ship safely.
Standard operational checks on navigational equipment should be undertaken when preparing for sea and after a sea passage prior to port entry. After lengthy ocean passages and before entering restricted coastal waters, it is also important to check that full ahead and a stern engine and steering functionality is available. While underway, good practice requires the officer of the watch to check that all orders are being repeated back and correctly followed. The officer of the watch should undertake daily tests and checks on the bridge equipment, including the following. Manual steering should be tested at least once a watch when the automatic pilot is in use. Gyro and magnetic compass errors should be checked at least once a watch and after major course alteration. Compass repeaters should be checked for synchronization including repeaters mounted off the bridge. Checks on electronic equipment should both confirm that the piece of equipment is functioning properly and that it is successfully communicating to any other bridge system to which it is connected. Electronic equipment systems should be checked to ensure that configuration settings important for correct interfacing between pieces of equipment have not changed. To ensure adequate performance, information from electronic equipment should always be compared and verified against information from different independent sources. Never totally rely on electronic navigational aids, because they are only aids to navigation and no substitute to conventional methods and keeping a good lookout. The OOW should not hand over the watch if there is any reason to believe that the relieving officer is unfit to or is temporarily unable to carry out his duties effectively. Handover should never take place during any maneuver, only when it is completed and the ship is in a safe position. Before taking over the watch, the relieving officer must be satisfied as to the ship's position and confirm its intended track, course and speed, and engine controls as appropriate, as well as noting any dangers to navigation expected to be encountered during his watch. The officer of the watch should execute the passage plan as prepared, and monitor the progress of the ship relative to that plan. If a temporary deviation from the voyage plan is made, he should return to the plan as soon as it is safe to do so. If the captain decides to deviate from the voyage plan, the plan needs to be formally amended, and a briefing on the new plan given to the other members of the bridge team. Good navigational practice demands that the officer of the watch understands the capabilities and limitations of the navigational aids and systems being used and continually monitors their performance. Uses the echo sounder to monitor changes in water depth. Uses dead reckoning techniques to check position fixes. Cross-checks position fixes using independent sources of information whenever possible. Uses visual navigation aids to support electronic position fixing methods. Does not become over-reliant on automated navigational equipment. Checks instrument calculated positions against visual positions whenever possible. When in any doubt, call the master. Care must be exercised when taking geographical positions from electronic position fixing systems like GPS and plotting these onto charts. The officer of the watch should bear in mind that if the chart datum differs from the datum used by the position fixing system, a datum correction must be applied 
before the position is plotted on the chart. In cases where charts are based on very old survey data, electronic positions should be treated with great caution, and even greater importance given to visual and or radar navigation to maintain the safety of the ship. Using uncorrected GPS positions, together with old survey maps, can be very dangerous in restricted areas, and even when corrected to the appropriate datum, should be used with great caution. As a general rule, navigation should be carried out on the most suitable large-scale chart available, and the position of the ship should be fixed at frequent intervals. Visual and radar position fixing, including parallel indexing, should be used whenever possible. In coastal waters, routing schemes, ship reporting systems and VTS may require reports and communication. Knowledge of the ship's draft, stability conditions and manoeuvring characteristics are all important parameters to be taken into account. The pilot is expected to have special knowledge about navigation in local waters. Depending on local pilotage laws, the master may delegate the conduct of the ship to the pilot, who directs the navigation of the ship in close cooperation with the officer of the watch and the master. The presence of a pilot does not relieve the master or the officer of the watch of their normal navigational duties and obligations for the safety of the ship. Both should be prepared to exercise their right not to proceed to a point where the ship is put in a dangerous situation. The safe progress of the ship along the planned tracks should be closely monitored at all times. This includes, amongst other things, fixing the ship's position and checking the underkeel clearance. Verbal orders from the pilot must also be checked to confirm that they have been correctly carried out. When the master leaves the bridge, the officer of the watch should always seek clarification from the pilot when in doubt as to the pilot's actions and intentions. If an explanation is not given to the satisfaction of the officer of the watch, he or she should notify the master immediately, taking whatever action is necessary before the master arrives. It is recommended that communication between the pilot and the bridge team is conducted in English. To comply with the Colrex, ships should at all times proceed at safe speed. In restricted visibility, safe speed may require a reduction in service speed to reduce the stopping distance of the ship. Speed changes may sometimes be the most suitable action to take to avoid a collision, as opposed to altering course. Safe speed means that the ship is proceeding at the most suitable speed, taking into account the prevailing conditions of visibility, traffic density, navigational hazards, weather conditions and any other parameters which may affect the safety of the ship. Today, ships are steered by autopilot most of the time. Modern autopilot and track-keeping systems steer the ship with high course accuracy and very little use of rudder. However, in areas of high traffic density, during reduced visibility and other potentially hazardous situations, a helmsman should be available on the bridge, ready to take over steering control immediately. Changing to manual steering should be done in good time. It should also be routinely and regularly tested in open water to confirm that all is in good order. The officer of the watch must be familiar with the operation of the steering systems so that no delay is incurred in the event of a hasty changeover being required. The officer of the watch is responsible for compliance with the radio watchkeeping requirements of SOLAS, 
the ITU radio regulations and any local watchkeeping rules. The following basic principles apply to all communication carried out by radio. Absolute priority should be given to distress, urgency and safety communications. Interference with other radio users should be avoided. Frequencies should be used for their correct purpose. The officer of the watch should be aware that ships have search and rescue obligations under SOLAS. Ships that are in a position to provide assistance on receiving a signal from any source that persons are in distress at sea are bound to proceed with all speed to their assistance. During search and rescue operations, ship-to-ship -ship communication should be by VHF or medium frequency. Satellite channels should be kept free for communications with rescue coordination centers.